Hey, everybody. You know how much I like questions. So I was asked a question just recently about, can you show what it takes to convert chassis axles and things like that to liftable, non-liftable, steerable, all those things? Well, come to find out, I've done all of those things on Project 3XX and or the Retinue uh, flatbed trailer that I'm working on by Corby. And um, so I'm pretty well versed in explaining what needs to be done and what features you can add to your axles on your chassis without renaming any parts, involving yourself in Blender in any way, or anything of that nature. So let me show you what you need to do. So we're in my second favorite program right now, which is Notepad++. So what we're going to do is we're going to find some files to open so I can show you what this all looks like. Now, let's go to Project 3XX. We'll go to our definitions file. We're going to find the chassis. Now, there are a lot of extra chassis on here, a few of which are just because, just because before, there was the lowering feature in 1.44. You had to create a separate chassis to have a lower frame. Now, some of the chassis that I do have in here have the actual low leaf suspension system. So it is a little bit more accurate, but either way, I can probably get rid of a few of them. So let's look at, for example, a three axled rear. So we're going to call this an eight by four, like it shows up here, <clears throat> excuse me, on line number five. Um, now, this shows your residual travel number, which shows you how far up and down your lift axle will go, as well as when you're going over a bump, how far up and down the axle goes. So the smaller this number here, the less room it has for the suspension to travel. So it will not go up and down as much. Now we move into the powered axle, liftable axle, and the curb weight of that axle. So in this case, we have two non-powered axles. And after 1.43, if I recall correctly, everything goes from front to back now. Before it used to be back to front on rear wheels and front to back on front wheels. So front wheels would be steering wheels and rear wheels would be the dual style wheels of a truck. So you'd have first axle, second axle, fourth axle, third axle is how it would look. But now it's just zero through four, or zero through three in this case, but one through four, if you're talking real world applications, zero is always the first one in video games. Liftable axle, zero is false. Liftable axle one is true, two is false, three is false. So that means that the first steering wheel is not liftable because that's the one that's underneath the hood, essentially. And then this one is in the back, just behind the sleeper or day cab in this case. And then these two are the drive wheels, which will not be liftable. And then these are your curb weights. So the front of this truck weighs 11,000 pounds, and these two numbers here don't go together, but these are in kilograms here. And so that's how much this particular truck weighs per axle. So there's some of your information you can glean from that. Now, you can make this if you would like. As you can see, this is a steer axle. So that means that in Blender, this value right here on one and here on one is a front axle. So there's not much you can change there. However, if you go over here, to the third axle. This is the same version, except it has a dual rear wheel axle. You can make this non-liftable by changing this to false. So copying this 
a whole file in this case. So what you would do is you would take this and you would copy and then you would paste. And then this is going to be RD, we'll call it, for drive. So three drive wheels. And then you have to remember to change this as well because the unique name must change, otherwise it will overwrite the other one. <clears throat> so in this case, now you could say eight by six, also eight by six, powered axle true, liftable axle false. What that means is that the first axle behind the sleeper will be an active axle. It will not go up and down and it will produce drive. So it will, it will turn wheels and you can essentially put a fender over all of it because it will not raise up and down with the lift axle button. So those are some of the things that you can do. In all we've done is copy paste and now we can save this and we can go in the game and see that this now does not go up and down and it is powered, which some trucks are six wheel power in the back, <clears throat> especially heavy hauler. So these are, th these are things that are options for you to do in the game without even opening Blender in any fashion whatsoever. You're only looking at text files. Does it take a long time to figure out in the first? Oh, absolutely, you better be sure. If you don't change these names up here, <clears throat> to be unique. If I don't add that D there, all it's going to do is tell me that there's an error because there are two files with the same name, right? Because not only do the actual files here need to be different, but the unique name inside that the game will be looking at, these files here, file names here, are just as, if not more important. So be wary of that. Let's have a look now at one of the trailers. All right, we head over to the chassis configuration. <clears throat> so we go to the PNW, so the Pacific North, more Northwest axle configuration. Here, we don't have powered axles just because it's a trailer. So we only have steerable axles and residual travel. Again, residual travel is the same as it is in the trucks, how much the suspension moves up and down when you go over bumps and speed bumps and things of that nature. Liftable axle, so first and last axle are liftable, meaning when you press the lift axle button, these two will go up as long as the load weight is not exceeded, uh, in which the game decides whether it can it is too heavy for the axles to be lifted. <clears throat> but if you don't have anything on the deck, you can certainly lift these axles and see them. Now, the other one is on a PNW, the rear axle is a what we'd consider a front axle on a truck because it steers and it has a single wheel. So in this case, you make this steerable in the back. You can remove that by putting false here so that it will still go up and down as shown here, but it will not be able to be steered which goes against the PNW kind of route anyway, so not really something that you'd be looking to do. Again, you would have to change the name of this as well as the file name, just like I showed in the truck. So copy paste, change the unique name of the trailer chassis in this case. Now, additionally, you also have to go in and change the configurations inside the configurations folder in your trailer in order to add that chassis configuration inside here. That's a whole different video. Um, I explained it in my um, ownable configuration video a long time ago, but essentially you'd be creating a new um, one of these to show that this new chassis type just has a non-steerable rear axle, et cetera, and then you'd add all the bodies that you wanted that chassis to be visible with. 
However, for this, in this case, this is what we're looking at. Now, additionally, I have a double spiff, which has five axles. The This is a Ontario style trailer, which has two, the two front axles are single wheel steerable axles. So they are liftable. So they can be lifted up when you're not driving and they are steerable when there is a load on and they're down. So you can remove the steering feature or remove the lifting feature. Again, just by copying and changing this name, changing the file name, these are all things that you can do to change these uh, axle configurations without having to go into Blender and export and import and all these things. This is the, these particular things are not necessary for that. However, if it is steerable and it is, if it is liftable, generally speaking, it's going to be a front wheel anyway, but you can stop them from being steerable or liftable in any case. And you can make these, which are dry, which are not drive axles, but they would be the dual wheel axles in the case of the spiff. You could make the, this rear one liftable too. So you'd only have the two middle ones, um, on the road when you were empty. So a lot of different options for you to explore using these features in the game. So I hope this sheds a little bit of light on what you can do with SII files and without going through Blender and doing all kinds of additional work that you may not want to learn just yet. And I constantly tell people that learning the kind of the backbone of the game, which is the text format, is very important. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know there wasn't much by way of Blender or seeing in-game footage, but really it's just looking at text and explaining to you what these particular things do in the chassis file. So I hope that you do some exploration for yourself and you find out that you can change things pretty easily and be proud of your work while doing it. Hope to see you for the next one. Have a good one.